Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. And with me is Sam West. Today, we're going to be talking about the spell Illusory Script. Um, all right, well, I'll give you my first impression first. I, I don't really have one. I just find the spell a little bit on the, on the dull side, a little boring. Yeah, that's the general impression. I rarely see this on players' character sheets just because it is so underwhelming. Uh, it's a neat secret code messenger thing. It has yeah, it's got practical uses. It's just I don't I don't know. I've never played in a campaign where I I use them. Yeah, it's it's hard to use um, because you have to know a lot about the world. You have to be really committed. Someone has had to do a lot of prep, and you as the player then also have to do a lot of prep to figure out how to make this work. Um, it's gonna be a lot of like working in backgrounds and stuff oftentimes, or it might be like a, the kind of thing where you're expecting people to come behind you and you need to give them a message, but you don't want the monsters that are following you to get a message, but that's a very niche scenario. Um, mm -hmm. That's the, the player use case of this, I think is quite bad. Um, it, it is saved by the fact that it's a ritual spell. So as a person casting it, you're never ever, you should never ever spend a spell slot on this. Um, you can just spend 11 minutes instead of 10 or instead of one and 10 gold pieces later, you've written the message and you've used no resources. Um, that being said though, uh, this to me stands out as something that it's very clearly a tool for dungeon masters to use. This is yeah, very- that's what I was thinking. Yeah, this is, this is something that I would expect to be like in the DMG even more so than the player's handbook because it's just a way to sort of create an interesting puzzle. Like they have to go catch a goblin and force the goblin to read the thing so that they can understand what it says because they figure out it's a loser script with tech magic and stuff. Like it seems to me this, this is a way to communicate with players specific information or like if someone's hiding in distress, they give just say, oh, well, I'm going to exclude everyone that isn't that monster, my captor. And then you can read the illusory trip as the heroes as the players and be like, ah, the maiden is trapped up at the top of the tower. We must go save her. Uh, See, and I monster, was thinking more yeah. of a, like a, like a Rosencrantz and Guildenstern kind of thing where you like, you know, say, all right, I'm going to write you a letter of recommendation. And then uh, they then take it to somebody and says, murder these people. And, uh, but that's, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. That works too. It's it's a fun way, you know, to kill somebody, but it's gonna happen off screen. Yeah, yeah it's true. Now, on the flip side, if the DM you know gave you this letter and you say, All right, I'm gonna take this to the king, and and then uh you know, it says, All right, guard, seize them, then you've got a you know, a potentially fun player experience. Yeah, a neat little plot hook. There's also gonna be um Again, like, like from a DM perspective, just giving people parchment with illusory script on it is going to, in and of itself, be a neat mystery. Especially if you have those players that just love spamming detect magic because they're going to detect a magical parchment and they're going to see the magical parchment and they're going to know there's illusion magic on it, but they can't read it. And it's going to really bug them. And it might just be like mm -hmm. a practical joker doing it, but at the very minimum, you now have a fun little side quest to be like, oh, is it, a, is it an illusion? Is someone taking over the town or is someone just trying to hide an affair? I guess you'll never know. Um, and you can do some neat role playing and world building with it too. Um, a lot of illusory script can come down to like being an, a coded message system. If you have like a wizarding society that's predominantly all your high arcanists and your floating towers and giant crystal balls and stuff, then passing around and using illusory script constantly makes a lot of sense. And it can be a way that you navigate a bunch of different things. It also can just say two different things at once, basically. If you have like a group that you know are going together, you can just quadruple side of the paper by having one person be able to read it and the other person not and then just have a different message for each of them it's a weird niche use case but that can technically work um it i'm glad the spell exists i find it's weird that i like players don't ever really want this so i kind of wish there was a better way to give dm tools like this um because mm. as is eh. It, like you want to spend a spell like even as a wizard where you're never needing to prepare this because you can ritual cast from your spell book do you want to take a slot in your spell book for this it's not as good as identify it's not as good as dispel mat or detect magic it's fine it's so niche it costs gold which makes it so you can't just use it whenever you actually have to meaningfully want to use it because it, that like gold costs have an arbitrary limiting factor on usage that I find really frustrating um, because they vary so wildly game to game. But in low level play, illusory script can't be like all that exciting to use. You can't make funny messages and fart jokes with it like a lot of players would want to. 
specifically mm. because it costs money to do and like yeah you can spend money on jokes and stuff but if you don't have a lot of money rolling around then it's not even a good joke spell then it's just yeah I think that's uh probably like campaign dependent though i mean if yeah if the, if the money's rolling in yeah that's the, the i think you mentioned it before the problem with a lot of these gold costs is mm-hmm. you know it, that it really depends on uh how much money is flowing in the game you know if, if you if you're getting you know money hand over fist then uh yeah 10 gold isn't a problem but if you're if you're struggling to get by and you know keeping track of each each meal at an inn then uh yeah 10 gold is uh unreachable prohibitively expensive yeah yeah there'll be games where like eat because it does it, like even though it has a gold cost those gold costs is in material components so you still have to somehow get access to those material components which means even right. if you are rolling a dough even if you're like sitting on a pile of one hundred and fifty thousand gold pieces if you're spending all of your time out in the world adventuring and none of your time in towns you just don't have access to the stuff anyway and even if you do get in the town you just go okay well do we just decide to carry around like a hundred a hundred golds worth of the stuff we carry around a thousand gold worth of the based stuff egg. Yeah. yeah like do we just shove this on the donkey and hope for the best like what happens if the donkey gets fireballed? Does it just all go up in flame? Do we have to track that now? Do I care to track that for what is such an underwhelming spell? Mm. It it just overall is a nuisance. It's a neat effect. Again, I like as, as a player, I don't think I would hate taking it as much if it didn't have the gold cost. And if it I could use it as more of a character building sort of I want my character to be the spy, the espionage character with passing coded messages and stuff that feels like it would fit them. But in that scenario, like it just costs money to do that. I don't want to spend money to do that. I don't want to have to pray that my DM gives me enough money that I can have cool character moments. I don't know. Yeah. It, it, it gives the spell majorly for me. Yeah, I'm with you. It's, uh, I think uh, Dungeon Masters are going to get a lot more use out of it. For sure. For player, as a player, I am. I can't see myself using it much. It. So. it yeah, yeah I think there will be tables like if again if you reach like eighth level and you're just sitting on a giant pile of money Scrooge McDuck style and you want to play that cool illusory uh, like maybe you're a arcane trickster or something and you're really in the market to do some coded messaging this could be something you pick up um, and have the money easily to afford it and not really worry about it all that much um, but that's really the only use case I can see players having for it if yeah, you already I guess it is player dependent as well that's uh, there's I could imagine there are some players that would really want to do something like this. Yeah. I'm just, just not one of them. Sure. I just, for those players, I wish this was better. Um, but if you are a DM out there and you're looking for some cool ways to liven up your world, um, honestly, reading spells like this, it very clearly is meant for you. It's very clearly meant for DMs. Um, this is something that you could absolutely, it goes in dungeons, it goes outside of dungeons, it goes in politics, it goes in adventure, or it goes in exploring. You can put this in um, tombs, you can put this in catacombs, you can put this in castles, you can put this wherever. Um, and as long as your players have a detect magic somewhere, they'll notice it exists. They'll notice that something's off about it and you just have a built-in puzzle on a first level spell. And, you, and they can try and figure out what does this actually say. They can try and figure out, um, you know, are they receiving a special message or someone else receiving a special message? They can sort of decode and decipher it. It's a really easy first level puzzle. And on top of that, you can expand out as much as you'd like for them. It, it's a great baseline to start with to build out a magical setting, to build out, well, what is the politics of a world where people can write encoded messages constantly and you can't trust anything you read? How does that affect things? And ask some weird questions and do some cold world building. This spell's great for that. Um, it's not great for players, though. No. All right. Um, you got a Sam score for this one? Ah, uh, yeah, this is a comfy two out of five. This is a pretty bad spell um, from the player's perspective. These ratings will always reflect, like, will I put this on my character sheet? And the answer is most of the time, no. But, like, there will be small instances where I won't hate it. I'll be like, all right, I, I do want to be that cool spy right now. I guess I'm high enough level and have a deep enough pocket that this is fine. All right, well, that's Illusory Script, everyone. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, our full review of the spell, and other fun things.